The t-test works great when you have interval or ratio data, but when you have ordinal data, you need other tests to find out if there are differences within or between samples. If you have related samples, then you do use the test with this jaw-breaking name, the Wilcoxon Matched Pairs Signed Ranks t-test. If you have unrelated samples, you use the Mann-Whitney u-test. The explanation of how those work in the book is really a good explanation, so I suggest that you read that. What we're going to do is we're going to start working with some actual data. Let's start with some related samples. And the scenario here from the book is that you have a course that's taught by conventional methods and then taught again by computer methods. Same students, and you have them rate the effectiveness or how their attitude towards the class in those two scenarios. And you want to find out if there's a difference in the rating between conventional and computer classes. So what we need to do is we need to read in this data. And let's just check to the first three rows to see that we have it correct. And sure enough, we do. And then all you need to say is Wilcox test, and then column one, which is the conventional, compared to the computer. And these are paired. So we say paired equals true. And we get our probability value of 0.02. And the value of the statistic is 15. We also get some warning messages. We get warning messages that says you cannot compute exact p-value with ties, and you can't compute exact p-value with zeros. The zero, by the way, comes from this person who gave the same rating before and after. In order to avoid these error messages, all you need to do is do the same thing that you did before, except say exact equals false. When you say exact equals false, that says, don't worry about the warning messages, just keep going. And then you will get your output without any warning messages, and you'll still get your same data. When you report your results, you have to tell how many items there are that you were looking at. And you have to eliminate people like this, who rated them the same before and after. The way you figure out how many there are is to do the following. We're going to look at the length of the conventional column for all those entries where the conventional is not the same as the computer course values. And that will tell us how many people gave a different rating from one situation to the other situation. And sure enough, that comes back as 14. So that's probably the easiest way to find it. With 15 values, we could have done it by hand. But if you had to study with 100 or 200 values, you certainly wouldn't want to do it by hand. Let the computer do the counting. Computers are much better at that stuff than we are. Now let's go on to unrelated samples. For this, we have done a simple survey where we ask people who are male and female to rate how much they appreciate these subtle stylings of the Three Stooges and their humor. These say this is a male-female. Oh, by the way, no experiment or bias here. And the scale of 1 to 6, where 1 is they strongly agree that the Stooges are terrific, and 6 is, for some reason, they strongly disagree. Again, no experiment or bias here. Now we have unrelated samples. You might think, oh, good, we're going to say something like Manda Whitney. Unfortunately, no, that's not the way it works. It turns out that you still use the Wilcox test, but you're going to say, in this case, paired equals false, because they're not paired with each other. But of course, before we do this, we have to read in the data. Let's reuse our d variable. And again, look at the first three rows, just to make sure that we have everything correct. And sure enough, it read them in properly. Now we have to separate the males from the females. So let's take the female ratings first by saying female is assigned the rating column where the gender column is equal to the letter F. And the males are the rating column where the gender is equal to the letter M. And then we can look at male and female and see what those are. And then just do a Wilcox test of the male statistics against the female statistics. This time, paired equals false. And by the way, you can abbreviate just the letter F. 
and exact equals f, so that we can avoid having any warning messages come up. And we will come up with, as it says, w equals 65. It's the same exact number that you would get if you did a Mann-Whitney test. And in this case, we have a 0.04 um, probability, which means that, yes, there is a significant difference in the way the men and women rate the Three Stooges, but you probably already knew that. The t-test works. There's one final point about the Mann-Whitney u-test. When you report the statistics, you have to give the number of points awarded to each group. And when you do just the Wilcox test, the one that we did, for example, against males and females, and then we would had the paired equals false and exact equals false, we got a value of 65. That's the number of points for the female group. To get the number of points for the male group, you have to do the test the other direction. Females against males, again, paired false, exact false. And you will get the other data for the males, which is 160. Then you'll be able to report both of them. The lesser of the numbers, in this case 65, is going to be the value that you're going to report as the Mann-Whitney U result.